Uh, the first one is a presentation and an update of the restaurant building at Sandbar Park. So I'm going to hand the baton off to Chris uh, Bilo, who's our Parks and Rec Commissioner, along with Jared Miller and Rory Fitzpatrick, who are with Campus Construction Management, who have been pretty much overseeing everything over the Sandbar Park. Gentlemen. All right. Um, obviously, thanks, uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to kind of come in tonight, give everybody an update on what's going on in regards to the uh, the restaurant bar down at Sandbar Park. I know there's been a lot of uh, discussion, questions that people have been having. Uh, we felt it was, uh, at this time, that it was probably wise for us to come before the town board, kind of give an update as to what things have been going on for the last several months, uh, especially after we after you, the town board gave the approval back in March for the to move forward with Passero and campus uh, in regards to the design component um, for the restaurants in, at uh, at Sandbar Park. So tonight I'm going to give a brief orientation or an update. Um, if there's questions, obviously feel free to ask. Uh, we will uh, bring up uh, one of our guest speakers here shortly, so you'll be able to actually hear from the restaurant too directly. <coughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So, um, 23, if you remember, early in 23, we reached back out to the expression of interest that was originally done um, to see if there were any potential restaurateurs who were interested uh, in operating the restaurant uh, operation down at Sandbar Park. We, uh, we actually had a pretty good response from this, what I'll call second expression of interest or reopening of the expression of interest. Um, we sat down, we sat um, with a couple of restaurant tours, uh, two to be specific, kind of got their vision, their thoughts, um, some of the things that they were planning or hoping uh, they could do in that location. Uh, we did that for about three months. Uh, by the time we got into March, uh, one of the restaurant tours had stepped away. It wasn't something that they wanted to proceed with. So we were, uh, we were then dealing with one restaurant tour that we felt at that time kind of met everything that the community had expressed from an interest standpoint and you know what they wanted to see from a facility down there uh, and what kind of a uh, service and type of a facility they wanted to uh, have at the location. So we were fortunate that that uh, restaurateur um, worked with us through that process, uh, which at times was a little lengthy and did take some time in, in discussion and, and kind of the planning process. but. Um, you know, the town has uh, been lucky since, you know, about March, April of 23, been able to work solely with the Fantuzo Family Brands uh, and their, uh, their, their, their management team to be able to go through the process of not only the design, but also just uh, making sure that, again, we meet the community needs for what, uh, what type of facility uh, has been, been shown for down there or requested for down there. So um, I know everybody has been asking, you know, who the restaurant tour is and who's going to be taking, you know, taking that 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 space up. Uh, obviously, as you can see on the slide, the Fantuzo Family Brands, uh, they've stepped forward and they've been a very good partner for us through this process. And we'll get Caleb up here in just a minute to kind of be able to share some vision from from their side. Um, one thing I do want to go through um, is the. the the sort of the schedule of how we've got to where we were. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of move forward to November when we really realized that this was something from the Pantuzo side that we wanted to move forward with. Uh, and they were obviously um, willing to go along with us on um, the various steps, etc. So when we got to the fall uh, of last year, November, is when uh, we actually submitted that application to the various state agencies to be able to build and construct a 24, up to a 2400 square foot restaurant bar. Um, as, as those of you that recall, um, you know, this building was not part of phase one from a permitting standpoint, so we basically had to begin this from a new. So we did that in November of 23. It took about four months, you know, like um, that process does, is it takes a little bit of time. And it took about four months for all the various agencies to either waive you know, to waive their involvement or to uh, give their approval. So we received those, all of those approvals um, by about mid-February of this past year, or of 24. Uh, so about mid middle of the month, uh, we received the final, um, I'll say thumbs up from the DEC. 
Um, so that kind of moved us forward. Uh, once we got that, we knew we were good to go from an up to a 2,400 square foot facility, which for those of you that have been to that park, I've had numerous conversations with people. Um, you know, that location is actually um, the area that is designated for the restaurant bar, which is where the Bayside used to be. Um, that area is actually slightly larger than 2,400 square feet as it includes some planting areas and some, some overspill area. I've had a number of people that didn't think that that space was large enough, uh, but it actually is larger than the pre-existing site, uh, and it is um, easily to be able to accommodate again that 2,400 square foot facility. In March, as Supervisor mentioned, um, early March there was a presentation to the town board by Campus and Pastro. Pastro from an engineering standpoint, design services, campus from an overall construction management, they did a presentation. Um, just made sense for both of those uh, agencies to be involved in this process. Is obviously, they were very involved in phase one of the project on the Sandbar Park. So they did their presentation in early March, the following week. Town board approved the agreement for, um, for the town to enter into agreement with them for, uh, for, for us to be able to go into the design phase. So that was on a Thursday night and the following Monday, um, we began uh, discussions from design phase. Again, that was um, the town, um, Pastoral Campus, and Pejuzo um, Management. So we began that in early April. We began meeting uh, bi-weekly basis to be able to go over design concepts and what we'd like to see down there, et cetera. Um, so we've actually had, uh, we've actually ended up with I think it was four meetings with a fifth this coming week um, where we've gone over different revisions and plans or thoughts and ideas, um, which brings us to where we are now at the end of that timeline. Um, where we're at the, uh, the design phase is us getting close to being done. It's not 100%, but it's pretty close. That's why we thought it made sense to be able to get before the town board tonight and uh, kind of get this out there, uh, make sure everybody was following along and understands what we've done in this process. Uh, it's taken a little bit of time, but I think we've done a, a lot of work in, in these months, uh, both on the town side, campus and password, but also on the Pantuzo, their management team have been very involved in this process. So, um, yeah, so that takes us into for where we are. From an uh, important date standpoint, um, everybody's heard enough of me now, so I think what I might do is I'll ask uh, Kayla from the uh, from the management team of Fantuzo Family Brands, come on up. I know she's got a few things she just wants to go over. And again, we thought it'd be best if board hears it directly from, um, from this group. So, uh, with that being said, Kayla, yeah, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for having us tonight. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kayla Morita, president of Fantuzo Family Brands. And after the long anticipated wait, I'm thrilled to be here tonight to let you know how excited we are to be a part of the Sandbar Park revitalization. Personally, I have over 20 years of experience in the restaurant industry, and I work with a team of professionals that have over 200 years of combined restaurant experience. Our goal is to bring something truly special to Webster, where life is worth living. I've worked with several towns in my 13 years working for this family-owned company, and working with you, Tom, and Chris, and your team has been truly amazing. It's been a long time coming to get to where we are today, but I can confidently say that we are so excited for what's to come with the bay. Lots of fun, new ideas, and even some ideas to try the past. I hope the Webster residents that are here this evening, that may be watching, or those that will find out soon, are ready for good food, good times, and amazing memories. At this time, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the town board members may have. And I don't know who is moving. Isn't there a couple slides that yeah. uh, Kayla uh, who's moving? I'll get into it. So, you know what, Kayla, at the town board, if you guys have some questions, I'll bring you back up after we go through the slideshow those, okay. and then that may spur some additional questions, and we'll do all of those. I think and so, because the visual of what the exactly. design looks like now probably is spur questions. Yeah. That's Thank a nice segue have. for me. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks, Kevin. Um, so, from a design concept, um, obviously, as I you know, as I stated, it's been stated numerous times, uh, the building itself uh, has a maximum square footage of 2,400 square feet. 
Um, the idea, uh, the thought process is to maximize, obviously, both views of both the bay as well as the lake. So uh, as we've gone through these design changes and these design um, uh, concepts, trying to take into account um, also the features that are currently within the park. So things like the, uh, the restroom that was installed this year, the color of that facility along with the shade structure, uh, those kind of concepts bring in the color schemes into this building along with meeting uh, some of the, the interest or the desires of the restaurant tour to uh, keep this as a, what I'll say, a, a waterfront location, a, a sort of as, as I've heard a number of times, a beachy thing um, to be able to have that uh, sort of look at that image. So that first picture is actually um, looking from the north side. So it's not like you're standing out on Lake Road. Obviously, these are designed and conceptual plans, so a little bit skewed in regards to you know where you know black tap might be, etc. But I think it gives you a pretty good idea of how the front of the building will look. Um, parking, etc., is obviously to the uh, to the west side, along with some on street parking. <coughs> the main parking lot is, is to the west side. Um, we go to the back side. So now we're standing on along the edge of the bay, looking at the back of the building. Um, this building, there, this view obviously shows um, that that center area is actually an open, uh, an open window type of access to the bar, so we'll be the outdoor seating for access to the bar. Obviously, this will be where you'll see tables, chairs, uh, booths, etc. or um, you know, dining seating is on this area. Um, and then the stairs to the, uh, to the west that lead to the rooftop deck. Rooftop deck does have dining seating, so there's actual views to the lake side as well as the back. Uh, so it's obviously a, a very, uh, very picturesque setting uh, to be able to have, um, you know, to the, to the one side, be able to see around the Coit Bay and all the activity that's taking place there. And then to the north side, having the lake views, something that I think really will make this uh, facility very unique and, and special for that location. If you're going to be seats, and I see the outdoor seating in that deck area in the, the second floor. Is there seating there as well? Yes. So it's not inside. Inside. No. Yes, inside. Not inside. Okay. Yeah, that what I'll call the cupola area it's up on top. That's actually some of the air handling unit. Uh, there's some storage that's up there, but it's really designed more for cabin. I see. Okay. Well, I'll obviously come back to that if people have other questions. Um, last slide is the uh, the one that uh, where we are now and where we need to be here coming up. So as I've uh, shared numerous times at our meetings, um, you know we've got through the design phase, which is obviously was the critical part, uh, being able to go through and get a design that meets both uh, for the restaurant tour as well as the town uh, facility that uh, that works. And that was the most critical part. So now we can get into the cost estimates, and that's where. I'll look to my left where campus now comes in uh, a bit more heavily in regards to uh, being involved with that process for us. Um, my hope is that in the next uh, seven to ten days we'll begin the process between the town sitting down with the Fantuzo um, team, their management team to be able to work off some of the uh, some of the estimates that campus is working up right now. That will give us the parameters of how we build the agreement moving forward. As we've known all along, you know, this agreement's a 15-year agreement uh, for any bond that we do take out for this. It's a maximum of 15 years, unlike some of the other town bonds where they can go up to 30 uh, because of the public-private um, relationship for this bond. We know it's a max 15 years, so that's going to be sort of our driving factor of how we pay that bond back, and that's uh, that's what I'll say is the next hurdle for, for the town to, to work with the management team of Fantuzo to be able to come up with an agreement that that solidifies paying back that bond over that course of the time. Hopefully, uh, if everything goes according to the way we sort of scheduled this out, we'll be looking to go to bid sometime this fall with uh, with construction starting and then opening in 25. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. my last slide. So now, Kayla, if you want to come back up, if they have specific questions for you, that's what is the time we're going to Questions that for me, for yeah, look for Jared, I, I have a question about the format of the restaurant. Is it going to be more akin to what was there and the type of menu that was there, or something that's 
like, yeah. I don't know, the other Salvatore's restaurant mm -hmm. on Bay World, for example? It will be a completely new concept. Um, some of what was there to just kind of tie in the past, but also a lot of new fun ideas that we've been developing right now. That's wonderful. Wonderful to hear. I, I will say too, and I'll add to that, Jennifer, that as part of this process that we've been going through, there's been a lot of discussions about how if the town has activities and things that they would like to do now that that park is, again, what I'll call a destination location for this town, um, very open to that, um, that opportunity to be able to work with a restaurant tour to be able to provide, whether it's you know, music or whether it's food or whatever it might be, but to be able to have that relationship has is, is been very nice to be able to when we have those discussions, have that uh, have that option go. It's great. There's so many possibilities of how this could be used, and it's really very exciting. Thank you. Congratulations, um, and also Sam is a long way. You know, thank you for joining us as well. And also, too, I noticed I know what the ADA is. You guys do nice to that, right? So everything will be ADA compliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm very, very excited also. Um, looking forward to uh, the build out and also the menu. Italian food is the best <laughs> by far. Thank you. That's coming from an Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll, it'll be interesting when the, when the numbers get crunched. I'll be interested in seeing those. Yeah, we, we've known, and I've, I've shared with the supervisor in a number of meetings that you know that. The sort of a process that we're going through. I know some for some people, you know, they want this to go a little quicker, but obviously we want to make sure we do this correctly and we're doing this the right way. And again, these guys have been fantastic that they've been, you know, say, very patient with us and willing to work as we go through this. But uh, we knew that this was sort of our next our next process. And I got to say, along those lines, Chris, is that um, you know, I've been very impressed with the whole team at the Trent Tuso family. Um, Brands and um, I, I've known some of them for my whole adult life and even my like, kid life, I guess, uh, having gone to high school with Sam's brother Chuck. Um, so I was always appreciative during this process that you didn't kill the messenger of Chris and myself in the town. That private and how things move along in private are very different than how things move along in the government process. It's been something that I've struggled with coming over from private to the government. It's, it's a snail's pace. Um, and you, you've been very gracious about that. Uh, once we explained it to you, uh, you're like, okay, I guess I understand. Um, and also, the money you've invested. Um, you know, when, when Chris says the design, what you just saw up on the screen is really a collaboration of Passero's uh, architect uh, division, um, but the Fentuzo family uh, brand's architects. Um, they had to work together because obviously, you know, we can't just go off on our own as the town and say, okay, we'll figure out a building and you'll, you'll just like it. That doesn't make any sense. So um, that's a big leap of faith on Fentuzo family brands to, to invest that kind of money when there was no guarantee that we were going to get to an end resolution that we're getting closer to as we, we sit here today. This is a very big milestone event to that. Um, and, and Chris, I'm glad you put the timeline out there because uh, the town started investing money in this project, really going back to 2022, when campus, uh, Jared, you were at the table as we were doing design and cost estimates of a 2,400 square foot uh, single story building. So when that didn't work out, uh, some of those concepts and things were able to be brought over to this, even though it is very different because they had the second story roof. But I mean, the town was spending money back then um, with campus on trying to move this forward. Um, and so, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, like I said, this is very exciting. And uh, I've been looking forward to this night. Uh, Kayla, did you think you were going to sit up there and get 75 questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys scared me slightly, but I'm really excited to be here. I thought it was like probably the lifetime to get here, but we're so excited. We can't wait to meet you guys proud of the movie. Well, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I, I think it's interesting that because we've all been been dinged with questions on when's it going to happen, everybody's just been jonesing for this announcement. And like as you said, government moves slowly, but people think because they haven't heard anything that we haven't been doing anything either. So it's important to show that timeline and show the commitment on both sides where we've been working through the process. And uh, I, I've always said that the process sometimes is onerous, um, but in the end, we get a better result. So I, I'm really pleased that we can finally announce this to people because I know they've just been so excited and so anxious to hear what's going to be going. And I know what was already said is that obviously, you know, uh, I, I guess it's like a rock band that goes to a concert and they, the fans just want them to play the role of hits. Um, and my analogy to that is, let's just call it what it is. Sam is an entrepreneur beyond belief. Started his first pizza place, I think, in Wisconsin and Maine. And, and when you're 18 years old, that's mm -hmm. mind blowing to me. So, you, you know, he's known as Soccer Sam. He's very involved in soccer and all this. He has pizza places, franchises, that. So it's, it's understandable that people think, oh, it's going to be a pizza product. I don't think the community totally understands the entrepreneurial nature of how diversified that business is. And one of the things that's been enjoyable for me working with you the last uh, several months is, you know, <laughs> Sam, he's like, hey, you know, we, we're getting into the bar business in certain businesses. He goes, I'm not a bar person, so I hired the talent that's the bar person. And that just permeates throughout your organization, is that he has the foresight um, to go out and get that kind of expertise. Um, that falls outside of making a pizza, let's say. Um, so to me, it was very easy to see that, yeah, this restaurant, and I appreciate John, you said, oh, I can't wait to go down there and, and eat Italian. I, I think you'll be very amazed about how it will be branded and what type of uh, food they serve down there. I don't think you should just jump to the conclusion. I mean, I, Sam, I'm pretty certain it's not gonna say Salvatore's uh, pizza. Uh, um, I know there's some ideas floating around, so <laughs> some good ones. We'll put it that way. But I mean, um, we're very fortunate because I gotta tell you, I mean, this is a homegrown guy and a family business, and not just family, but they're structured where we get this thing built. I, they've got this for the next 50 years. I don't know if you'll be alive in 50 years, Sam, <laughs> but you built an organization. It's impressive that how the continuity of it is built and all that. So thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Well, if, uh, let's not belabor the point. Uh, it's dessert. You guys can you know, leave the kitchen table now or the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you all for being here. Yeah.